and hello again and here we are the back of my garage on a very rainy day looking at my mark ii project which you've not seen for a while so in the last episode about this bike we were looking at the engine and now the bottom end's been completely rebuilt the blocks on and the next task for the engine is for the head to go off to be completely rebuilt by roger upperton over in leeds he's a chap who also rebuilt the head on my 1170. when that's done the head comes back will be taken apart again and have to go off to be powder coated um, to match the engine as indeed will this american spec cam cover which we've machined off the uh, this weird anti-air pollution type stuff that used to be on it so i've just got to now smooth off some of these sharp edges and it can go off for powder coating however as you can see there's not much been going on with the actual rolling chassis for a long time i have however just fitted the uh, original Kawasaki Tokiko six pox to the front end using some new titanium bolts that just arrived through the post and I may well keep that I quite like those six pots I know they're considered to be a bit old-fashioned now but I just found them to work quite well but the reason why we're now looking at the running chassis is because today an awfully big box turned up so let's see what's in that box and there is that box surrounded by all my other projects but anyway we'll do our best and in this box are the new wheels for the Mark II project. Now, when it comes to the wheels, it's been quite a long story. I've considered all kinds of different things, all kinds of different options. And originally I wanted to have brand new Dymags, English made wheels put on the bike. Now, when it comes to Dymags, there are two options which I considered that they offer. One is the original three spoke H style Dymag from the uh, 70s, very classic design now available in aluminium or alloy rather instead of just uh, magnesium because you really don't want to be using magnesium wheels on a road bike the other option is what they call i think uh, something like up7s they're the newish seven spoke design wheels and they're both about the same price about 2300 pounds something like that then of course you've got to buy new sprockets, new discs, uh, new carriers and it all gets very expensive. And the problem I had was that having considered it for a long time, I decided that the three spoke, classic three spoke Dymags wouldn't look right on that particular bike. On a different bike it might do, but not on the Mark II. So that left me with the more modern seven spoke Dymags. And to be honest, I thought they were really boring. They don't look like two and a half thousand pound wheels, that's for sure. I mean, I'm sure they are, I'm sure they're really well made, very light, but I just thought they looked bland and kind of dull. So that set me off looking at alternatives. And what I wanted was a pair of wheels that were A, absolutely immaculate if they're used and they have to be as good as new. No marks, no scratches, nothing like that. They had to be five spokes, they had to be gold, and the back wheel had to be a 5.5 rim because this 1170 has got a six inch rim on it and it's the right paint to get the chain alignment correct. We had to make a brand new one-off sprocket to get everything lined up. Whereas with a 5.5 rim and a 180 tire, we should get away with using a standard sprocket from say a CZR 1100, which I happen to have on a shelf in there. So yeah, that's what I was looking for. And I went through, you know, all kinds of bikes, all kinds of Italian bikes, Japanese bikes, BMW, you name it. I went through a whole host of pictures of bikes looking for this perfect set of wheels that will work on the Mark II. And it soon became clear that all the modern super bikes all have six inch rims, so they're not good to me. So I concentrated on the mid range, on the sort of 600s and 750s to see what they had. And I went through all the CBRs, Honda CBRs, all different models, all different ages, ditto the Zuki's Chixas, ditto Yamaha R, Bonds R6s and so on. And of course the Kawasaki uh, ZX6Rs, that sort of thing. And in the end, I found one particular model that I really liked. It's taken me three months of looking on eBay to find the perfect pair of wheels for the bike. And here they are at last. They're actually brand new, new old stock effectively. I've not opened the box yet, but let's see if my decision was a, a good one or not. So here goes. It's actually very well packaged, of course, because these wheels are quite delicate in transport. So come back when I've opened the box. Ooh. Right, so this is the rear. 
Now, these are totally brand new. Never ever seen a bike. New old stock, as I say. And let's have a look at them, shall we? Oh, yes, they're like them. And let's see if you can guess what they're from. These. I think this might work for the bike. Let's just get all this stuff off it. Well packaged. So, there they are. And those of you who don't know, these are from a Yamaha R6 2008 to 2015 or thereabouts. They've come complete with bearings, which is great because I've actually bought these already just in case they didn't have any. So, that is very very nice they don't come with the cush drive sprocket carrier so i bought one used already with brand new rubbers inside so that's great now oh this is very good in fact it's blooming light light as well now i'm sure a modern dime mag may be a few ounces or a, a few grams lighter than this but it won't be very much and for sure these are a hell of a lot lighter than uh, anything from the last sort of from previous sort of 10 15 20 years ago they, they really are light so yeah, very pleased with that. However, there is, as always, a problem. And the problem is that the spindle sizes of a Yamaha R6 are very different from spindle sizes on a ZXR, uh, sorry, ZXR? ZRX 1200, which is what we've got on the Mark II. And I have been through two complete catalogues from SKF and it's Toyo, or Yoto, whatever, the Japanese maker of bearings, and they nobody makes the appropriate bearings to make these wheels fit those spindles and so it's going to be oh no here we go again it's going to be quite a tricky thing to make it all work but I think we can do it we'll have to modify an R6 spindle to fit a ZRX front fork and we'll have to make some pretty big spacers and quite involved things to do to get the rear wheel this rear wheel to fit the back swing arm and spindle on on the uh, ZRX uh, back end there and the problem is, I think that, let's see if I can recall now, the rear spindle on the bike now is 20 millimeters. The rear spindle on an R6 is about 28 or so, believe it or not, I guess they're hollow. Whereas on the front, it's the opposite way around. The, uh, the front spindle of the Kawasaki is bigger than the front spindle on the Yamaha. So it's all sort of mixed up. So I've been buying lots of different bearings and so on to try and hopefully get the combination that gives me what I need. It doesn't help as well that these things have also got uh, needle rolls in them with a bush inside. And if you, I can't get the correct bush size, no way. So I'll have to use a standard bush and then bush that in turn to make it work with the spins we've got. Anyway, that is really nice. In fact, the sun's just come out temporarily. So you can see how nice that looks. No marks on it, no. Absolutely lovely. So I'm very pleased with that. And the total cost of these two was £350, which I felt was quite good compared to paying £2,500 for a brand new set of um, die mags. And I had seen each individual wheel sold separately, used, and they're about £150, so you know, you can't argue with that. I was very pleased to find them. It took about three months of searching on eBay to find these, but I think uh, it's well worth it. But as I say, it's going to be a lot of work to get these wheels to fit that bike with the Kawasaki running gear on it, or rather the Kawasaki forks and the Kawasaki uh, swing arm and spindles. I've also of course got to buy the discs. Uh, I think I'll go for new ones and may even get uh, discs from Brembo. They do some nice ones, quite expensive, they're like £400 a pair for the front and about £90 for the rear, but I think the bike deserves it. So that's what I'll be buying next. I've got my, my uh, allowance as it were, my spending limit's been hit now for, for this month, so uh, that's it for the time being. So, the next time you see these, hopefully we will be busy measuring and making these wheels fit that bike, which is not going to be easy, but as I say, I'm very happy with these so far. Won't be easy to make it fit, but we will do it. Jeff knows what he's doing. We once did something similar with my Gnarly, where we had a three quarter inch front spindle for a Harley, fitted to a front fork from a Honda Hornet 900, and I think that was something like 25 mil. And it was a heck of a combination to try and get it all to work but we got there in the end so hopefully we'll do the same again so that's it so far and we'll catch up in a few days time when we can make a start on making these wheels fit that bike <laughs>